doesn't make sense now. She just got one. You're like a dream come true. Two. Just wanna be with you. Now I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Why is all the toxic trash man R and B singers <laughs> like? How is that possible, y'all? Like literally, the songs they be singing sometimes it's like, damn man, this shit is crazy. Like he's singing this to me. Like it ain't even about the person they wrote it about. It's about me, okay? And they always seem to always be toxic and trash. So we gotta get into this. I got a comment yesterday i hope you don't mind me posting your comment sis but yeah so she commented she said you making a video about that brian mcknight mess i don't see much coverage on it but he a whole mess and yes he is indeed and yes i had to go ahead and get on this just because you asked and just because it needs to be talked about with his raggedy nickel head ass it needs to be talked about so i had to do a little research yeah i had to make sure i get some facts in this video because at the end of the day, we don't want to be quoting just because the blog said I want to quote something and research a little bit about it. You know, because I I grew up on Brahminite as in like in middle school, I was singing the songs because his, my mama was playing the shit. I didn't like, you know, what, what's the word? I didn't, I wasn't like, you know, if he was 18, I wasn't 18. If you get what I'm saying. You know, I'm, I'm fucking 27, y'all. So, y'all know the damn mad. But, yeah, grew up on his music as far as with my mama playing it. And I know, like, one or two songs from Brian McKnight. But he, he was never in, like, the rotation growing up, for real. Like, it's one of those things. If Pandora playing this song, you know, I might let it ride or I might not. But I haven't had Pandora on my damn phone in about two years. So, that ain't even happening. But, yeah, let's just get into Brian McKnight. So... You know, the news is, um, allegedly this is like older news, but it like resurfaced again. <laughs> but uh, the picture basically showing him and his stepdaughter from his new wife, a uh, kid, and he bought her a car and he was saying stuff like, you know, basically kind of like claiming her as his only daughter. But y'all, if y'all didn't know, I know they were saying on the shade room that he got four kids. He only had three kids, y'all. The fourth kid was uh, from a lady that was claiming to be his, you know, uh, be his kid or whatever. But they end up taking a paternity test and uh, that's not his kid. But Google still have up that the last kid, Clyde McKnight, was his kid, but it's really not his kid. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Clyde McKnight might be the new kid, though, now that I think about it. Okay, well, he don't count. Why the fuck? Why is this up here? Why is this on damn show? Okay, they gonna confuse me. I know he got a kid that's coming on the way with the new... Um, no, nah, matter of fact, yeah. I'm, I'm getting confused, y'all. Yeah, Clyde McKnight is not the... That was the alleged kid, but that's not his kid. They took a blood test that was not his kid, y'all. Um, The new kid that he have on the way is with his fiance, and I think he's a junior. I think he actually named the little boy after him. Even though he already got a son that's named after him in, in the first junior child he he basically is like i said trying to rewrite his history so we got to kind of get into bribing night history yeah that's what it is his new son that he just had y'all i'm gonna insert the picture too um is named after him let's just keep on scrolling also the kids in 2019 had posted like a long message directed toward their father basically to sum it up you know he's was a trash ind individual like he was there sometimes but not really and i also had saw a video of him i had to uh, screen record it from somebody else's page i'm gonna include the video as well in a second but he was saying how he was paying child support and he was there for his kids, but he don't want to support grown children as being his reasoning behind it. And then he also was saying that um, his his current wife right now was trying to help them get a job and was pressuring him to actually build a relationship with his kids. I'm traveling about 17 hours to Guam. I have a concert tonight and I got off the plane to some of the most heinous craziness I've ever seen in my life that my oldest son, Brian, would post that I'm abandoning my children. And the reason why I suppose is because I have a new family. And I guess this stems from a post that I made the other day about my son, Jack, who I'm very proud of. 
which isn't to say I'm not and haven't been proud of my other children, but I was proud of this one for the things that he did that day. But we'll get back to that in a second. Anyone who knows me knows over the last 20 years, 30 years now, as a matter of fact, that I've been there for my children every step of the way until recently. And let's be clear, my two sons are 30 and 27, not 12, not 13, but 30 and 27. Now, my daughter's about to turn 18. That's another story I'll get to in a second. Uh, I've never missed a day of child support. I've never done anything adverse to my children whatsoever. I've always been there. I've always been there with advice, whether they took it or not. I have always been the sounding board, and I've always been the one that tried to, to help them achieve whatever dreams they were wanting to reach out for. Um, I guess one of my only faults is that I gave my children everything that I didn't have in the hopes that they would appreciate it, because I know how much I would have appreciated it when I was their age. Um, I would tell you as parents out there, entitling your children is probably one of the worst things you can do, and I know I am guilty of that. Um, for whatever reasons, I am guilty of that. Um, tough love is a tough thing as a parent to try to institute to your children because you want to help them as much as you can, and I did as much as I possibly could. When I stopped doing that for them, BJ was 25 and Nico was 22. And it wasn't like I completely cut them off at that point. That, that happened much later. But I've been there. Um, when I put them out of my house, I gave them an apartment for two years. And I said, guys, this is it. This is the time to grow up. I'm giving you two years. I'm going to pay for everything for two years. But you're going to have to work or do something because at the end of those two years, that's going to be it. It's time to be men here, guys. It's time to grow up. At the end of those two years, they hadn't done any of it. Um, it was just right around the time that Leilani and I had gotten together. Leilani was working at Children's Hospital. And let's be clear, Leilani has been one of the only people who's been an advocate to keeping us together, to keeping us having a relationship because she wants to have the nuclear family as much as I did. And they have spit in her face at every turn. She got them jobs at the hospital, $18 an hour with benefits and with the option of the hospital actually paying for them to go back to school. They said, and I quote, that they knew they didn't, they didn't want to stop smoking and they would have to pass a drug test. And the day I had the doctors looking into it, Nico's on there, you know, taking a big puff, of which is fine. If you want to smoke, that's fine. I'm not saying that I'm saying that that's bad. If that's your choice, that's your choice. But what I'm telling you is that we have been advocates for them every step of the way. Now, let's go to the part where we have been estranged. Again, we talk about abandonment. We're not, it's, I'm not abandoning them. We are estranged, which happens more often than not in this particular situation. BJ broke into our home a few months ago and he put X's on the eyes of our wedding photos. And then he put a photo of my first wedding on Leilani's vanity. It was at that moment. And after I heard him say, and was pointed to from other friends of mine that saw his posts on social media, that he, he basically said that I was better off dead to him than alive. I was more valuable to him dead than alive. And that was the end of me dealing with him. And I felt like that was a red flag on top of red flag because for one, if somebody, if a woman got to pressure you to, to toss your kids, you really is the problem. Like, I don't know why he made that seem like, like to give her big ups or whatever, but that makes you look more trash. And let's just be honest though. I'm going to speak from personal experience. Well, not like me personally, but people around me. I'm not going to say who exactly. But usually when a step parent has kids of their own, they don't mind that the father is not talking to uh, their their kids. If you get what I'm saying. If the, if the father has kids with another lady, uh, other women in general, and then if they're not really having a connection with, with their kids, their first kids, they don't mind it because they want us to be like, okay, well, this is your family now. This is your new family. You know, you don't have to worry about your other kids. They don't want to talk to you right. If they don't want to, you know, listen to you or whatever, you can just be safe with us pretty much. But um, that's not right. Brian and I know, know he not right for this. And he got a long line of shit that he did wrong. Like, like I said, I had to do a little research, y'all, because... I mean, I wasn't in that era for real. I wasn't really in the Brahmin night era. I didn't know he was married uh, once with his high school sweetheart. That's where the first uh, children came from, the two sets of boys. Not the two sets of boys. The first and the second boy came from. And while he was with his first wife, 
which they was together for like 13 years with his first wife and he was cheating on her and then he had an outside baby. So that was where the daughter came from um, with Brahma Knight. But he was cheating on his first wife and then he ended up getting engaged to another woman and he ended up cheating on her and ended up being with now the third wife. I mean, the third, well, she's not the third wife, but she's the second wife technically, but she, he was engaged before uh the third wife child this girl this is getting too you know what see i ain't even need to do all this <laughs> i just needed to get my damn opinion i'm over here trying to do this extra shit trying to get the facts all in this video i ain't even need to do all this i'm about to get my opinion on this shit brian and i know he ain't right period at the end of the day this man was not right for what he did for what he doing he's doing stuff out of spite you can go on his instagram page this man literally put all the names to his stepkids in his damn bio as if Thomas on father of Julia, Jack, Kiko, and Brian, you know, which is the son that he just had with the, uh, the one he married to now, the lady he married to now. Like, this is just so disrespectful. This is like, it was no need for you to do all that. And then to make it seem like, oh, this, this is the only kids that you have. Because most people probably wouldn't know that the Brian and I have kids because how he moving, how he acting, you go on his page, you scroll down. All you're going to see is him, his wife and his stepchildren all throughout it. You're not going to see his kids at all on his page. Y'all look at him. Look at him. Just changed his whole life, baby. He said, uh, my past is my past. <laughs> my past is my damn past. Don't bring it up. Who? Who kids? Are, no, they're not my kids. It's just sad how people be acting toward their own children and wonder why they hate hate them. Because also in the interview, I don't know if I recorded the part, but I know he mentioned that on an occasion that his son, one of his sons had broken to uh, the house that he lives in with his wife and put exes on on a picture like on a over their eyes or whatever which is crazy as hell but still he put pic x's over the pictures faces and i mean what eyeballs or whatever and like was just basically kind of like spazzing out like saying i hate you and stuff like that that man was hurt okay i ain't saying i'll break into my parent house especially my daddy house even though he ain't shit i wouldn't break into the damn house and put x's on no damn pictures you know with him having different children but it's like you just never you can't tell somebody how to handle they hurt and how to cope with they hurt like then i also got to point out i had saw this other comment hold on child where is it where is it yeah so the video i was watching when i when it came to the interview with brian and i it's somebody that commented and y'all know i love me a clown of the week baby <laughs> i love me a clown of the week so this was some, from somebody named daniel gerber he told me some best thing my dad did for me was cut me off we weren't rich, but anytime I thought I needed help, usually financially, I run to my dad. One day he said, that's enough. And he did it with animosity. It strengthened our relationship and taught me responsibility. Good for Brian and best of luck to BJ and Nico. Please go to hell. Daniel, Daniel, sir, sir, can you come here for a second? Go to hell, go to hell. Your dad was not fucking Brian McKnight. I, I'm pretty sure you, you, your daddy ain't touched the amount of money that Brian and Knight did, okay? So, if anything, if he was telling you no, uh, may, maybe he really, truly did not have it. Like, he didn't have any more to give to help support you in your situation or whatever. That's probably why he cut your ass off. Um, So, so let's not relate your uh, situation to, to him, it's be for real. And for you to say, Thompson, it's strengthening y'all relationship. Once again, that's not that's not you. You're not Brian McKnight. Your daddy ain't Brian McKnight. You ain't even cousins. Okay? Please relax. Please. And everybody don't handle every situation the same way. Because, I mean, if my father was famous, had money... And all, all this other stuff. And, and you know what? Let, let's just let's just go on, put a scratch over there. Let's just scratch that part off. When you have a child, when you bring children into this life, I feel like it should not be an expiration date on how long you can help them out. If you have it to give, give it. 
we all grow up when like we we didn't ask to be here let's just be honest because at the end of the day the children should not be punished because the adult you know brought them in this life like some i mean times is hard y'all let's be for real baby i used to be able to go in, in walmart with a hundred dollars and get a couple of grocery, like a good amount of grocery. Now all of a sudden, baby, it's like I only got goddamn two packs of chicken and five noodles. Five noodle boxes. Can't even get fruit with it. Can't even get a little soda on the side with it. Like times have changed. So, like I said, if you have the money as a parent, you should be able to support your kids and and at least help them. Like I understand he was saying in, in the interview or whatever. Well, not really an interview. He's kind of like talking recording and like sending it out or whatever but in that little clip he over here was uh saying about the, the the wife trying to get them a job and they couldn't stop smoking okay they probably was kids it, look listen people mess up people as growing up we need guidance let's just be honest we need guidance for growing up and most people don't have somebody that they can turn to for guidance regardless if you got your mother and your father in your life sometimes you still need extra set of guidance because some of our parents wasn't good with what they was doing growing up like they not you know not saying that they should be like extremely well out but the decision they have made and are currently making is not something that you should be looking toward for guidance so some people need an extra boost of guidance how about be that, Brian McKnight, instead of complaining, saying they couldn't stop smoking? How about helping them, helping them out? Being that light in their life to help them. But no, you rather sit here and have kids, well, have one kid with this, with this lady, but then claim her kids, which is nothing wrong with claiming somebody else's kids, but also claim your own biological kids. Let's be serious. It's dusty behavior. It's trifling. It's sad as hell. He needs to be talked about. But then again, I feel like another reason why a lot of people are probably not talking about Brian and I is because he haven't really been mainstream in the last couple of years. I can't remember the. I think he the last song I I heard from him or a last little snippet of anything. It was that it was some song that sounds freaky as hell. I'm gonna see if I can find it, y'all. <laughs> but that's the last time I heard something from Brian and I. Other than that. He not really mainstream, but still, at the end of the day, he one of the people that was well talked about, was on, on reality, not reality shows, was on sitcoms, on all the damn black sitcoms back in the day. And it just needs to be talked about because it's just trash, like trash behavior from men per usual. I got to put my foot on your damn neck. Um, Y'all, y'all let me know how y'all feel about this situation. Do you feel like this wasn't even worth <laughs> It's not even worth putting energy into. Like, how y'all feel about it? How y'all feel about Brian and I? Do you still listen to Brian and I music? And what's the song? Because I want to see if you're lying or not. What's the most recent song you, you listened to from Brian and I? But yeah, y'all. Um, Yeah. I just I just had to go off the dome, child. I don't be writing on notes for this, y'all. So sometimes if it sounds like I'm stuttering, I'll say I'm goofy as hell. Just know it's because I'm kind of going off what I'm thinking at the moment but yeah y'all make sure y'all like subscribe and comment and i will be coming back with more content on this channel a little bit of the track this is what i say let me show you how your pussy works since you didn't bring it to me first i have lots of things to show you if you're ready to learn let me show you how your pussy works bet you didn't know Let me give you a little bit of the track.